Hi everyone and welcome to Yoga for AS. This is Next Steps, the perfect tutorial following first steps. In this video, Jeff will go through a set of yoga postures for AS. Listen to his guidance first. Hit pause and then have a go for yourself. Ensure there is enough room in your house or wherever you are practicing, about the size of a single bed. The equipment you will need is a chair you can easily move around, a belt, some blocks and maybe a few blankets, but if you can't find all of these, don't worry, a chair and a belt will do for now. A key phrase me and Jeff always emphasise is stretch, not strain. If you're feeling the stretch, you're getting the benefits. And importantly, have fun and stay tuned for more videos to come. Hello again, I'm Jeff. I've had AS for more than 45 years, but I've been practicing yoga for more than 30 years. Today, we're going to take the next steps. The first video was for absolute beginners. Now, next steps. So what the basic reason for doing yoga for AS is, is that we slip into this posture a little bit and the stretching and the opening and the unfolding that we do in yoga stretches the points of inflammation which are in the joints and in the emphases, which is where the ligaments and the tendons and the muscles join the bone. So yoga stretches, extends, and that literally breaks up the inflammation so we get relief from pain. And it may help in the process of, of worsening as we get older. It may slow that down, it may alter it. But at any rate, it can help to relieve pain pretty much straight away. So one of the things that we're going to do to start off with is just stretching the toes. We don't often think about that, but we're going to just stretch the toes like so. Lean forward on them and stretch the toes to open them up. It's the same movement as if you stand and lift the toes there like so. And when we lift the toes, lift the belly up here as well. That helps us to stand a little taller. Use a wall or a chair and just move the ankles gently around. Get used to the idea of movement again. Do both feet and turn the other way. We always do both sides in yoga, which if you think about it, if you've had sacroiliitis, as I did for many years, you get a pain going down through the buttocks, down through the leg there, and it's hard to even lift your leg, isn't it? To lift your foot, to take a step up to on, on a curb, on a pavement, or to go up the stairs or down the stairs. So the body gets thrown out of alignment. So one of our other aims in yoga for AS is to get the alignment of the body uh, straight and even again. So we're going to start with Tadasana, the mountain pose, which we did in the video Absolute Beginners, but we did it with feet hip width apart. That was because it's easier to balance when your feet are hip width apart. What we're going to do now is bring the feet together. So that bring the big toes together and then bring the ankle bones together and the ball of the foot. That helps to spread the toes, a bit like spreading the fingers like that. So then we try to stand tall. So coming out of the pose, straighten the legs as much as you can and lift the belly here. And we do that by tilting the pelvis up. You may not feel much movement at first, but as you practice this, you'll get more. So it's a very, very small movement. I'm exaggerating in order to illustrate, but that pelvis is tipping up there. So it's a feeling of lifting the bottom of the belly up. And then we lift the chest. This part of the chest here, the breastbone, the sternum, goes up and forward. So it's like that. And the shoulder blades drop down. So this is Tadasana, and we're breathing softly and gently, in and out, in through the nose, out through the mouth, 
in to the count of five, out to the count of five, in to the count of five, in your own time, out to five, in to five, then out to ten. The last breath out is a long, relaxing one. And there you're really trying to stand as tall as you can. There are no set goals in yoga, particularly yoga for AS. If you just make marginal improvements, one and two percent, that's what we're looking for. Stretch, not strain. So the next one is called in yoga, in yoga language, which is Sanskrit. And it's good to use these words because they're recognised all over the world. And we have followers from India, from Australia, South Africa, the United States, Canada already. So this one is, uh, was Tadasana. This next one is called Uktatasana, um, sometimes called the chair pose. So standing with feet hip width apart, the feet are pointing straight forward. You've got a line through the big toe and the next toe, like so. And then we're just putting the hands up and we're dropping down like this. And the idea of this pose is that we stretch the calves here, the backs of the calves and the Achilles at the back of the heel, because they shorten over the years with, with AS. So we're going to practice three breaths in, three breaths out. You can use a wall, you can use a chair. That's what we did in the first video, Absolute Beginners. Here, in Next Steps, we're trying to get our balance. So, it's a drop straight down. And the longer you stay in this pose, the more you'll be feeling that stretch in the backs of the calves. Don't stay in it for too long. What you can do is you can repeat these. So, come out of the pose like I am now, shake out, relax a little bit, and then if you feel okay, you can go back to it. And often, the second time that we do uh, a yoga pose, it feels a little bit easier. We can work a little bit better. So there we are. That's Uktatasana. So the, the next thing that we need to do, because we're starting with the feet and we're working up the body, we're trying to get the legs standing straighter. The next one we're going to do is tabletop. And we'll use a chair for this. <coughs> But you can easily use a windowsill or um, a table. Use the heel of the hand there on the edge of the table or on the windowsill or a ledge of some description. We're going to use a chair here. So stand, get your distance. Now you may find that because you've not exercised for a long time that you can't get much further than that. That's okay, but what we want to do is just straighten the legs as much as we can and stretch out. Now, I've been doing yoga for 30 years. This one's really, really good for my AS. Extending the spine and stretching the spine breaks up that inflammation and straight away I feel a little better. But if you've not done a lot of this, just take it easy. Remember, three breaths in, three breaths out and we're relaxing into the final one. Your breath is, your breathing is in your own time. Some people have a, a larger lung capacity than others. So I say count yourself to five, count yourself to five, count yourself to five, count yourself to five, count yourself to ten. And just to reiterate how we do this, stretch up, extend forward as far as you can, Hands are shoulder width apart, feet are hip, no more than hip width apart. And we're just, you may find that your legs are not willing to straighten up. Just do as much as you can. And it's a lift of that spine. So headlamps are going down, the pelvis is tilted forward. So tabletop. There we are. So again, now that I've demonstrated that, you can pause the video, practice it yourself, come back, watch it again, and have another go. So the next one is the standing forward leg stretch. Now we may find that this one is best 
if we use a stool. Um, if you are comfortable using a chair, that's okay. But let's start with a stool. So again, standing feet hip width apart. We're going to put the, the foot forward, get your distance. There, and we're standing tall. So we're doing a kind of mountain pose, but then we're just leaning forward and this buttock is going backwards so that we feel a stretch through the leg from the calves, through the back of the knee, through the buttocks. Don't put your hands on your knee, that's too much of a strain on the knee. Put your hands uh, on the thigh there, or if you can stretch forward, go to the calf. We always do both sides. So it's the same again for the left leg. Lifting out of the right side, let the shoulder blades drop down the back, stretch up and stretch forward and then bring that left hip back. Bring the toes back towards you and you'll feel that stretch there. If you feel okay with that, you can do it to the chair as well. Remember always to have the standing leg perpendicular to the ground. Lift, be strong in the right leg. You don't have to force the knee back, but just be strong as you can and as straight as you can, and then just lean forward like so. If you've got good balance and good suppleness, you can go to the shin there. Same again for the other side. Always do the other side to even up. Breathing in and out three times. The final out breath is to 10. We breathe in through the nose, out through the mouth. So now we're going to move to the sideways stretch. Again, stand in Tadasana, feet hip width apart. Raise nice and tall. Take the left leg out to the side and just turn the back of the left hand onto the thigh there to help you pull forward here. So you should be starting to feel a stretch across the groin, across the hips. Do your breathing, three in, three out, and then we turn to do the other side. You can also do, if you feel okay, you can do that to the chair, slightly higher. But we only want to do it higher if that doesn't hunch us up. So if, if to get over there you've got to kind of bend like that, that's not good. We want this right hand side here to be nice and straight. So if we lift strong, if you feel good, you can do slightly higher to a chair. Make sure the chair is nice and stable and that it's not going to slide anywhere. So there we are. Do the other side demonstrate that. Standing nice and tall again, foot out to the side, get your distance, bring the toes back towards the, the hand, back of the hand on the front of the right thigh, keeping this, making sure your left side is nice and straight, you're not curved over where you're lifting the foot too high. There we are. And if you feel comfortable with that, you can extend that pose so that you're using a chair. Again, you want to have something nice and stable. Same thing, straight on this side. Use the back of the hand to just open you up so that your hips, the points of your pelvis here, are pointing straight forward. There we are. Standing, sideways, leg stretch. Now, pause and practice. Try that again. Moving on to the next pose, we're going to do a kneeling thigh stretch. So we've stretched here the Achilles, the calves, and we're going to do the fronts of the thighs and right at the top here, where the psoas muscles are joining on. So kneeling here, like so. 
get comfortable. This is a, a 90 degree angle. You want to be able to see your toes. You don't want to be too far forward like that or you're putting too much strain on the knee. And then we're just straightening up, lifting the front of the pelvis there so that we feel the stretch in the thigh, particularly at the top of the thigh. Breathing softly and gently, in three times through the nose, out three times through the mouth. The last one is to 10. This is a very safe way of doing the thigh stretch. I see people um, in the parks doing thigh stretches in unstable and straining sort of ways. Don't be competitive about this. Just do what you can. Do 1% more than you thought you could. That's all. Stretch, don't strain. That's our motto. And we always do the other side. So again, right angle here and also on the back leg. Try not to lean too far forward. Open up as much as you can. We're aiming for the feeling of stretch in the front of the left thigh there. So just tilt the pelvis up. Let the shoulder blades drop down the back. Don't stiffen up in the shoulders. And breathe. So there we are. That's the kneeling stretch. We're going to extend that a little bit as well. Just push the chair out of the way. So whilst we're still kneeling, we'll take the foot a little bit further forward. Before, we had the foot in a right angle there. The foot goes about a foot forward, like so. Toes are flat on the ground. And we're just going to drop down. Use the thigh to support yourself and you'll feel a stretch here. This is the idea. In yoga, this is called Anjamayasana. It's a drop straight down, not a, not a lunge forward. And we're not sort of going right back as well. Try to keep the head in a neutral position, particularly if you have neck problems associated with AS. Relax the shoulders and breathe. In and out three times, in through the nose, out through the mouth. As we relax, we drop a little more, we get a bit more stretch there. Repeating on the other side. So we start off with the right angle here. We move the foot a little further forward, using the hands to support. You don't want to feel any pain here. We want to extend up forwards as we drop down. You may get only just a little bit of movement. You may feel that's a really big stretch. Um, don't overdo the stretching. So there we are. Hi, Jeff again. We're going to do some sitting and lying down poses in the second part of Next Steps Yoga for AS. So before you start, make sure you're nicely warmed up. You might want to have put some heating on in the room um, that you're practicing in have gone for a walk to put some extra clothes on so that you're nice and warm. Um, if you have the opportunity, it's good to do something like hydrotherapy. There's a golden hour after hydrotherapy when it's easier and better to stretch and extend. But short of that, your local gym may have a hot tub. You may have a, a bath. Have a nice, long, hot, relaxing bath that you enjoy before you do your yoga. That means you're nicely warmed up and then when we want to open up the joints to stretch those areas of inflammation, to relax the muscles, the ligaments, the tendons, and particularly those areas called the entheses, where the uh, muscles and ligaments and tendons all join onto the bones. That's where we get inflammation as well as in the joints. So 
let's focus on our yoga. Um, and let's start with a little breathing, just to remind ourselves of how we're doing that. I've always been taught to breathe in through the nose and out through the mouth. So as a basic method, let's do that. So we're breathing in from the belly and then filling the chest up high and then that's in through the, the nose and out through the mouth. So if we do that three times and the last out breath is a long one so that we relax. So that just gets us going. And a tip about sitting on the floor. Um, the cross leg position is quite difficult for a lot of us. So instead of sitting with your legs up close like that, I've never been able to do that and I'm always uncomfortable with my right knee. Just extend the feet out like that and you'll find that that's a lot easier. You can cross the legs the other way if you wish, like that. But Make sure the ankles are active, don't just let them flop or you will get some pain in the knees. And when you go to a yoga class, the kind of yoga that we're recommending is Hatha yoga. And in that, typically, the teacher will show you what to do and then you do it. And then the teacher helps you by saying, well, just move your foot a couple of inches this way, that way, um, so that you get personal guidance. Um, unfortunately, we don't have that in YouTube videos. Um, so what we're suggesting is pause and practice. So pause the video, wind back, watch it and do it as it's shown to you. Um, the other thing you might like to try as well is what's often been called double yoga where you practice your yoga with somebody else, your husband, your wife, boyfriend, girlfriend, partner, member of your family, friend, somebody else with AS. It just makes it that much more fun and enjoyable. And they may be able to point things out to you that you're doing right or you're doing wrong. Um, and you can reflect on it afterwards. So we're going to start with a pose called Dandasana. Now this is a sitting pose and you can sit on a a cushion or a blanket. I strongly recommend that you get some yoga blocks because these are really, really helpful for people with AS who just getting to the floor is difficult. And you can pile them up so that you can make adjustments so that you can practice your yoga more safely and more effectively. So I'm going to demonstrate by sitting on a yoga block, but it might equally be a couple of books or, or a very firm cushion. Um, so we're placing this here, turning around, and sitting on the block, like so, and the legs are straight. Now, a lot of people find it very hard to straighten their legs. And if you have um, something called hypermobility, this is particularly uh, risky. So, um, what I'd recommend there, first of all, go to a website, hypermobility.org. That shows all the different kinds of ways that hypermobility presents itself. But a practical tip for yoga, if you're particularly or over flexible, put something under your knees. I'm going to roll up a, another yoga mat, quite a substantial one. This one is thinner and so it's smaller. You might just roll up a couple of towels or anything that will help you to lift the knees there so that it's not a you're not getting straight legs there and um, you may also be able to just edge off the block or the books so that your spine is supported and it just helps us to straighten up a little to lift the front of the chest but let's start on the block we've got something under our knees 
to help out. Now, it may be possible for you to do this without a chair, but we're going to do with a chair as well as without. So there we are, we've got comfortable. The toes come back towards us and the hands go just behind the hips with the fingers pointing forward. And we press down and that helps us to lift up. Now, if you feel that that's too much, you can use a chair as well. But using the hands behind there, even if you're a little curved like so, it still helps. All we're looking for is small movements. Remember, the main thing we're saying is stretch, not strain. So the smallest movement that you can get is the best one. So we're moving like so, and this is lifting up and away. So breathing in through the nose and out through the mouth, relaxing. Feel the stretch through the wrist and the inside of the arms, maybe a little bit in the shoulders as well. We don't want to feel a strain here, but we want the movement here. So this part of the spine is going in in this direction. So if we're like this, just the smallest of movement is good. And then press down with your fingers, with the fingers pointing forwards, look forwards, lift your head, focus on the spot on the wall and start your breathing. So we're in, out, in, out, in, out for a long breath. So into about five in your own time. I'll do it with you. So there we are, Dandasana. Options are to use the chair. Better here because it helps to push you up. If you feel good, you don't need to use a chair and you don't need to use anything under your knees. But make sure you don't overextend here. You can get a strain and we don't want that because one of the things that AS does that it took me years and years and years to understand until it was finally confirmed by an AS specialist physiotherapist. If we get an injury, the AS attacks it. And so an injury for us is worse than it is for people who don't have AS because that can, our injury can then last longer and be more disabling. So we particularly in yoga for AS want to avoid injuries. One of the things that um, has affected me the most is pain in the sacroiliac joints at the bottom of the spine here. So the sacroiliac joints are where the uh, spine slots into the pelvis. It's a bit like a keystone on a bridge or on a lintel over a window. And it's designed not to move. So if we get inflammation in there, how do we relieve that pain? So First of all, uh, the pain is not just inside the sacroiliac joints, it's in those emphases that join onto it, and there's some very long ligaments that join on there. They go down through the, the backs of the buttocks, through the legs, so that's why we get the pain going down through there. So even though my, uh, both of my sacroiliac joints are fused now, I can get relief from pain and achy pain in that area because there are other things going on than just inside the joints. So just to demonstrate where the sacroiliac joints actually are, the spine comes down here and it fits into the uh, pelvis and the sacroiliac joints run down here like so. So we get a pain that radiates down 
on one or both sides down through there. And in order to uh, relieve that pain, come to a lying position as best you can and slowly and safely as you can. You may want to use a yoga block or a book or a cushion or a pillow behind your head. This is particularly important if you have a, a bit of a, a hunch at the back of your neck and your, your neck is sticking forward. The head weighs a lot, so don't put a lot of tension into your neck. It's one of the weaker parts of the body is the neck. And if you have a problem there with inflammation or fusion, as I do, you should use a block there initially. If you then feel that you can put your head to the floor, fine. So what we'll do now, we'll start off with head on just one block there. Something about that thickness, a couple of good books. So I can comfortably put my head on the floor, but not everybody can. So relaxing into this position, the feet are flat on the floor and the knees are not cramped in or splayed out, they're pointing straight forward. Bring the right foot up, like so, and place the bottom of the calf on there. And then lift the left knee up, like so, and take hold of the left foot. Now, you might use a belt or something like that if you can't take hold of your left foot. But either way, using a belt or um, and I'll demonstrate with a belt if I can just place my hand on my belt. So putting that around there, like so. You can use just a, a belt from, from trousers or anything really that would help you to pull the foot forward. So what we're trying to do is to keep this right buttock on the ground so we're not curling over like that and we're, we're flattening, we're looking down the body that way. The right arm goes out and the palm up so that we're opening the chest and the shoulders and flattening the spine. And we should feel the movement in the hip area here. So breathing in and out three times and relaxing into this one. This is a hip opener and we'll move from this to the uh, opener of the SI joints and the areas and the emphases in particular around that. We always do both sides. For many years I had pain in the sacroiliac joints and I had quite a pronounced limp. Um, so yoga, once, I only went once a week to a yoga class, but that helped me enormously. Um, and for many years now, I've not had that pain, but it's really important to do both sides. If particularly you have a limp from SI pain, SI is sacroiliac joints. So again, breathing in and out three times. Pause and practice. Wind the video back and do it again whilst watching. So there we are. That's a hip opener. Now we always try to relax a little bit between poses. Um, somebody once said it's a bit like putting it on the hard drive instead of keeping it on the working memory. So whatever, um, just relax so that you shake out some of the tension. Now we're going to move a little bit. It's just a very slight change in the posture, but it moves the area of stretching from the hip to the right side of the right sacroiliac joint. So this time we're not going to hold the ankle. We're going to hold the knee. And we're just pulling that over that way, in that direction. And that changes the stretch from here 
to here. So all along this side of the sacroiliac joints, all the way down there, we're getting a stretch and an opening and extension and elongation of all of those ligaments and tendons and muscles. And in particular, we are reaching into the emphases, which are buried deep in the body. And that's why it's so important to relax and to be warmed up beforehand. So breathing in and out three times, keeping this buttock down on the ground here and stretch out the back of the neck too. There, now I can feel that particularly opening up that right side of the sacroiliac joint on the right side of the spine. Again, pause and practice. Always do the other side. Raising the right foot, bringing the right knee back intensifies. But just do the stretching to start off with. You can intensify if you want to repeat it. So the left side, keeping that left buttock on the ground, move this over here very gently. You'll feel a, a stretch at the bottom left hand side of your spine. The idea is you may feel it in the hip as well, but we're, again, we're stretching that left hand side of the sacroiliac joint. If this is something that's um, beneficial to you, it may be possible that we could do um, a video showing several poses specifically aimed at the SI joints from easy like this up to uh, more of a stretch, more of an extension, more of an opening. Um, but this is a good start. So there we are. Those are hip and SI openers. Refer to our Yoga for AS Facebook page where you'll see a photo um, from the uh, Spondylitis Association of America, which shows a diagram which proves how uh, what's called systemic AS is. It can affect any part of the body. But they are saying, and um, all of the people with AS that I've met over the years, everybody says at some time they've had that pain in the SI joints. I didn't know for 37 years that that's where the pain was um, until it was explained to me. So what I'm trying to do here is to give you the benefit of that experience. So another pose to move on to now is called Jitara. Uh, Jitara Paravanasana. It's a lying twist and we'll do it sideways like this. Again, use a block behind your head if, if you have any sort of discomfort in getting your head to the ground. If doing that makes you arch your neck in particular, use a block. I've noticed that a lot of people with AS, when they lie on the, on the ground, they have to arch the back of their neck like that in order to rest their head on the ground. That's not good. Use a block or a book or a pillow or a cushion. And in particular, Pay some attention to extending the nape of the neck. Uh, one of the uh, exercises we are given is called neck retraction. I prefer to relax because when you relax you stretch more and we use gravity here just to stretch out the back of the neck there and um, it's a lot more comfortable than some of the neck retraction exercises. That's not to say you shouldn't do those, but this is another option for you. So before we do Jitara, let's just focus on some particular points of technique, like the neck, protecting the neck. We don't want to be in a situation. The one thing we don't want is like that, where you can't get your head to the ground. You're placing way, way, way too much uh, pressure cantilevering your neck there. Yeah. So protect yourself. So for Chitara, we lie in the 
on our backs. Incidentally, if lying on your back is difficult, you can always use a, a duvet folded up a couple of times or a, a memory foam mattress topper or put a few mats in. It's also possible to buy some yoga mats that are particularly thick and soft. And they are not so good for the standing poses, but they're very good for the lying down poses because they protect our spines, particularly if we're in some flare and we have some um, particular pains up and down the spine. So for Jitara, you just take the legs here and just flatten the spine to the floor, bring the toes up towards the face and extend the neck so that the chin drops slightly to the chest. We don't want it to drop too low. Um, and look down the body and breathe. Again, Jitara is a particularly popular pose. I don't have enough room to spread my arm out on, on the left there, but I'm, I'm doing this particularly so that I can show you the movement to the right. So here we go. We're going to swing over this way and whilst turning the head that way. Now, I recommend that you go all the way over like so and stretch the right hand out now I have limited movement in my neck, and you may do, but we're going to try and look the other way whilst putting this hand out. Now if the hand goes up in the air, that's fine. If the shoulder doesn't go down, that's fine. All we're trying to do is to get that one or two percent, a little bit more movement. So the ankle bones particularly are together. You may not get the knees together, that may be as far as you can go. So don't hold this pose for too long. Breathe in and out three times. In through the nose, out through the mouth. And relax the jaw in particular. Let the tongue fall back, the mouth fall open slightly. I like to repeat this pose two or three times when I'm practicing because it's one where when you relax and do it a few times, you get much, much more out of it. To come out of this pose, just tighten the tummy muscles a little, press down with the right hand and bring the knees up. Then we always do the other side. So to come out of a pose, particularly a lying pose, roll over to your side and push up from there. That's the safest way. Um, so we repeat Jitara Parvanasana, the lying twist, stretch out the arms to either side, get the ankle bones together, Turn, my right shoulder comes up, then we twist and we look the other way. Now there are lots of variations that you can do on Jitara, but this is the basic pose and it's very good for, it's a bit of a back bend and a bit of a twist at the same time. So do your breathing in and out three times, pause and practice. You might like also to refer to the Spondylitis Association of America did a big conference at the beginning of May 2020 and they invited a renowned yoga teacher and yoga therapist called Larry Payne to do a yoga class for uh, four people, two men with AS, one woman with AS, but also uh, another yoga teacher. And in that, he shows some variations, some options on the lying down twist. So you might like to check that video out, either on the website of SAA, Spondylitis Association of America, or it's also on Yoga for AS Facebook page. So now we're going to move to a sitting twist. In 
The first video we did this sitting on a chair. The disadvantage of doing a sitting twist on a chair is that your hips move, whereas if we sit on the ground or on a block on the ground, they don't move so much. That means that we get the twist through the whole of the spine, not just a part of the spine and it's more effective. So I'm going to sit on just one block. You may find that you need more than that. You may find that uh, a couple of blocks or uh, a pile of pillows, but it has to be firm. So I do strongly recommend that if you are wanting to practice yoga for AS, buy yourself some blocks and a belt and a mat. It's not expensive and you get huge benefits from having just the basic equipment. So again, we're crossing the legs, but I'm demonstrating how I think maybe it, that might be difficult, certainly more difficult for me. My knees just simply don't go down. I know there are some people with AS whose knees just sit flat on the floor. Mine don't, and I don't think most people's do from by all accounts. So just move the feet forward, like so, and then just fold them way, way, way in front of the body, like that. That's more comfortable, then you can sit up straighter. So even if you're a little bit hunched over and the knees are up high, you can still do this twist. So sitting up as tall as you can, the top of the head rises to the ceiling. The shoulder blades in particular drop away. Don't be hunched over, relax them down. Let the shoulder blades fall away. Now, if you've been undiagnosed for many years and you haven't exercised because of the pain, then you're going likely to be like this and you're likely not to have a lot of movement. Don't worry about that. Just keep practicing because even if you have some fusion, even if some of the soft tissues have hardened up, you can still uh, stretch some of those soft tissues that are stiffening up. Yoga will not undo fusion. There's no uh, cure for the fusion, basically, is there? We don't have a cure yet. What we can do is recover a better quality of life. And that's what we're aiming for with yoga for AS. So the sitting twist, um, we've done our extensions in the earlier part of these videos to the spine. You'll get more of a twist on the spine when there is more gap between the vertebrae. So placing the back of the wrist here on the outside of the right thigh, place the arm behind you like so, lift up as much as you can and turn. One little trick is everybody says look over your shoulder. Larry Payne in his yoga guide for SAA said yeah, do that, but then also look the other way, and it gives a little bit. And it's true, it does. Bizarre, but it does. So there we are. Breathe in and out three times. In through the nose, out through the mouth, and the last out breath is a nice, long, relaxing one, where you're going to your maximum, and we're not overdoing it, are we? Coming back to the middle. Now, I've seen a lot of yoga teachers over the 30 years that I've been practicing, and they will say, just turn round to the other side. I say for us with AS, that that's been quite a, a bit of work. We need to just relax and stabilize. So when you do a twist, come back to the middle, just have a, a few breaths to focus to Loosen up the neck there. We've done quite a bit of work there and the twist on the spine as well. And then do the turn to the left. So placing the back of the wrist there on the arm to help us turn, we place the left hand behind us, push up with that hand, drop the right leg as, as much as it will go and twist. Because the hips are fixed here, this one isn't turning too much with us. What you can do 
is alter the cross of the legs, switch the cross of the legs. So this is another, like a double variation on doing both sides. So again, back of the arm on there, you might see my right leg doesn't go down as much as the left, there's less movement in my right side. Put the hand behind, straighten the, the right arm to help you lift up and turn. Remember your breathing. Let the, don't stick the belly out. Let the, the belly fall backwards. The chest rises and return. Come back to the middle after your three breaths in and out. Refocus, set up, focus on a point on the wall, breathe in and out a few times. Then turn again, back of the right hand there to help us turn. There. If you have any problems in the neck, don't overdo this. But you will find that you get good movement from the spine, which helps us to look over our shoulder, particularly when driving, for example. That is not just a movement in the neck. If you exercise doing twists, you'll be able to look over your shoulder to see if there are other vehicles coming, if you're cycling as well. So there we are, the sitting twist. Now we're going to do a bit of a, an inverted pose. That means turning the body a little bit upside down. And there are some benefits from this particularly, but this is also a kind of relaxing pose. So we're going to move Move the buttocks close to the wall, like this. And then just turn and bring the legs up the wall. So again, stretch out the back of the neck. If you need a block, use one. Don't be proud. And you don't have to straighten the legs, but if you can, you can move them a little bit. You can move them a lot. Bring the toe, don't have the toes pointing away because we do want to get a stretch through the back of the neck, the legs. So let's just assume that's as far as we can go. Options are to, on the breathing, on the out breath in particular, just to move the heels slightly away. You may also, if you feel comfortable, put the hands over the head like so, or fold them here. But if that's too much, just keep the hands there like so. Now, one of the immediate benefits of this particular pose is, well, A, you're relaxed and enjoying yourself, hopefully. Um, but if you have any inflammation in the knees, and I've had this particularly on my left knee repeatedly, um, inflammation here is often fluid, which has gone down to the knees and it doesn't go beyond the knees. So in this one, any fluid drops back down here. So if you have inflammation on the knees, try this one in particular. Extend the back of the neck. What I find is that um, I'm forever having to do this to check the back of my neck because there's always this tendency to arch the back of the neck because it kind of relieves the stretching. We're trying to do the stretching. So keep checking, keep checking your neck and just extend out and one of the things that helps you to do that is to look down the body that way and also turn the arms so that the thumbs go over to the ground you see here turn them over and turn the whole arm that turns the shoulders which raises the chest a little so we get a little one or two percent more oxygen into our lungs and a little bit more expansion of the chest so breathing softly and gently in through the nose, out through the mouth, in, out, in, out, in, out. And the last one is a long, relaxing breath. So pause and practice there. You might want to stay in this pose for longer than three breaths. It's a, a nice, relaxing one. 
but I don't recommend holding yoga poses for a long time for people uh, with AS. Um, you're doing probably more work than you think and you don't take unnecessary risks. To come out of the pose, just roll slowly to the side, like so, and again, come up from the side, again, slowly. You've worked harder than you think, don't overdo it. So, there we are, the legs up the wall. We've had a nice little relax there as well. Um, and with the inverted poses, it's good to just spend a little bit of time back in the normal uh, position, standing up. So come to standing. And another inverted pose that's particularly important is um, Uttanasana. Uh, it's a standing forward bend. Now, we did this with a chair in the first video in first steps. Here in the second video, we're not going to use a chair, but going to do some modifications that make it a little bit easier for people with AS. So coming to standing, like so, feet are hip width apart. You can use the wall, like so, and just fold over your legs and stretch the spine out. Now, stretching the spine out and increasing the, the gaps between the vertebrae is a really good thing for people with AS. Um, you might want the feet a little bit further away or you can do it a little bit further back. You might not need the wall. If you don't need the wall, make sure that the toes are pointing forward here and just fold down over your legs like so and bend forward so that you've got this extension of the spine. Gradually, um, you'll find that you can straighten the legs a little. Try to dip the spine here so that you get the stretch through the backs of the buttocks as well. Eventually, you'll be able to straighten the legs a bit more, go down a bit further, but that's not the aim. Yoga is not about, can you touch your toes? It really isn't. And particularly in yoga for AS, it's about, as we keep saying, little steps do them regularly and if over the course of a month of practicing these things you can start to feel more loosening up a little bit less pain then that's what's going to happen you can't have years of not exercising and of, of having pain and stiffening up with AS without it taking probably years to um, improve your yoga practice um, to the point that you can touch your toes uh, that may never happen. It, my son can't touch his toes, but he can do a sitting forward bend and just lie down. That's people's bodies, that's the differences. But with AS, that's a good way of safely extending the spine. Let's just do it again and do the breathing, just to demonstrate. So, pause and practice. Wind back and watch this again. Rising up. My head disappears out of the film, but going forward, slide down. You can put your hands above your knees, if you like, and just extend. Just let the belly rest on the thighs and drop forward. Let the head relax down. You can put the hands on the ankles if you can. To come out of this pose in particular, I recommend instead of unfolding uh, like so, I think when I've had sacroiliac pain, that is too much on, it increases the pain. So what I recommend is to come out of it, lift the head, spoon forward, and then rise up like so. So there we are. Forward bend. You'll do that with three breaths in and out as per usual. One of the things that, one of the poses that you particularly will have heard of is downward dog. Everybody seen those pictures of slim, young, supple, beautiful people doing downward dog. Um, most of us aren't like that, are we? So 
uh, what's the, the value of downward dog? It's a strengthener and it helps us to extend the spine and to tilt the pelvis, to stretch over the backs of the legs. So let's just demonstrate that one. Downward dog, come to the floor, place the hands shoulder width apart with your fingers, in particular your middle finger, pointing straight forward and the hands spread with the palms flat on the floor. Have the eye of the elbow here, have them facing each other. So the shoulders are over the wrists. That might be quite a strain on your wrists to start off with, but this is what you need to do to strengthen. So you're pushing out of the hands. Hold the toes under and push back on the out breath. So breathe in and on the out breath, push back. But in to start, just go halfway like so. This gives a good stretch on the toes as we did at the beginning of this next steps video. And you can extend that on the toes, keep lifting the arches, let the head drop, push out with the hands, like so. And we want to just drop the spine, so we're lifting the pelvis, like so. Now, do your breathing in and out three times, and then come out of that Spread the knees wide, put the toes together, and come back into what's called pose of the child. Resting the forehead on the ground. Now, if you can't get your forehead to the ground, use a block or a cushion or a pillow here. But most of all, don't do the back so that you're on the nose. That can put a strain on the neck. Turn the neck down a little so that your, so that your forehead is on the ground, like so. And we rest in pose of the child for half a minute or so. Then come back and we'll do dog pose again. And you can do this if you, when you're watching this, watch closely and then do it again yourself whilst watching. So, instead of having to rewind, we'll do it again. So, tucking the toes under, eyes of the elbows together, hands strongly planted, shoulder width apart, coming back up into here. And the reason for doing half a dog pose here, instead of straightening the legs, is that we want to get this tilt of the pelvis here. We want to open the armpits here to unfold the armpits because we fold in so much on ourselves with AS. It's the natural reaction to pain. And then you can turn the shoulders as well. That gives you a bit of a stretch across the top of the shoulder blades. So that's quite enough downward dog to start off with. If you want, as an option, you can try to straighten the legs. When I first did this in yoga 30 years ago, I couldn't put my heels to the floor. My heels now go to the floor. So that gives you an idea. It, it probably was 10 years before my heels went to the floor when I was doing downward dog. So by the time I started yoga, I'd had my air symptoms for 16, 17 years. It's highly likely that you're out there and you've had AS for a long, long time. You're just starting yoga. Don't expect huge results at first. Take your time and commit to sticking at yoga for all of your AS journey, which is really your life. So you've got plenty of time to get your heels to the ground in downward dog. So what you can also do uh, is join a beginner's yoga class. Um, you might also, if you find a good teacher, you could go to the British Wheel of Yoga website and find a qualified, experienced teacher near you. Look up for one who does Hatha Yoga and who runs beginner's classes. You might like to ring round a few. The one you like, ask to go and see and pay for a one-to-one -one session. 
and explain how your AS affects you. I think it would be a very good idea for you to take your yoga teacher once you've found one who you trust and you like and you've, you've had a few sessions with them it works well. Take them with you for your next appointment with your rheumatologist so that your rheumatologist can speak direct to the yoga teacher and say what their opinion is of where you're at with your AS and what you could and maybe should not be doing um, with, with yoga for AS. Um, my yoga teacher has been to uh, our mass support group uh, on occasion um, and uh, understands a lot about AS. Not many people do understand a lot about AS. So anyway, moving on, um, what we're going to do again is some neck exercises. We've moved up the body, we've extended the spine, we've done downward dog to open the armpits and move the, the spine out. Now we're going to do the lying down nape extension and rotation. In this one, we're using gravity to help us. We're not compressing the spine as when we're standing. Um, lying down helps us to relax a little bit more so that we get a little bit more space between the vertebrae for movement. And again, we can relax those soft tissues. The lying down neck rotation is one of the measurements that is used to see how far our, our AS has progressed. Um, but it can also be one uh, yoga pose which helps us to keep and maintain that neck movement. So coming down, again, I'm going to use a block. It helps if you can extend the feet out, but if you're more comfortable with the feet up, then do so. And on the out breath, just turn the head to one side and relax in this pose. Now, I'm not feeling any uh, tension or pain or stress there. And it's really difficult in this pose to overdo it. But by breathing softly and gently, we can extend a little, keep that left shoulder firmly on the ground turn the hands over so that we're extending the shoulders, turning the shoulders, and just look down and feel that movement there. Now it may be that when we do the other side, you have less movement or more movement. So breathing softly and gently in and out three times. Come back to the centre. Now you may find it's helpful to help your head move with your hands. So rather than trying to lift your head to move, just help out with your arms. We don't want you to tense up in the back of the neck and we don't want you to use um, just your neck muscles to move because the head weighs a lot. Center, relax, breathe a few in and outs, and then turn to the left. Now it may not look very much this, but when you lie like this for three breaths in and out, when you then go to move, you find that you've actually moved your neck, turned your neck a little bit more. So you can see, we're not using hands on the neck to try and turn the head at all, which is how sometimes people try to move their neck, but I don't recommend that. Just use gravity where you're not compressing the spine, and then to come out of it, use your hands to help you to lift back. So there we are. That's the neck rotation. You can, you'll feel more on that if you extend the feet and the heels away, but it's not essential. If you feel more comfortable, keep the knees like that. 
Now we're going to do the nape extension to the back of the neck. Take hold of the back of the head here and just gently, gently move the skin up. There's a very, a very, very slight movement there, but you can see my chin has come down towards the chest, a bit of a double chin, and we're looking down the body. So again, flatten the spine to the floor in the small of the back here. And relax and breathe into this. Again, we're not forcing the neck in any way, we're just using gravity and breathing and relaxation just to extend out the back of the neck there. To come out of the pose, gently roll to one side and push up from there. So there we are, that's neck rotation and extension safely not compressing the spine from a standing position. You won't hear any graunching sounds in your neck. So finally, now we do the Savasana, the, the deep relaxation pose, which we try to do at the end of every yoga session. Even if you're doing just a part of this video, you're doing say five or 10 minutes, just in, 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 in the middle of your busy day, do try to do a couple of minutes of relaxation at the end of it. So for this, this one is called Savasana. Again, we're using a cushion, a pillow, a block, a blanket, whatever. The trouble with cushions, of course, is that they have different densities and heights. And one thing we don't want is to have the neck pushed forward. So I'll use a block again. You can get these half blocks as well, half the thickness, and keep warm. So have a blanket nearby you if you can, or some socks on the radiator, that's one of my favorite tricks. Um, and uh, I'd say a nice jacket to uh, put over you to stay nice and warm. Because we could be here for five minutes, we don't want to get cold. So this is called Savasana. If you're finding that lying on a, a yoga mat or on the floor is too hard, then fold up a duvet or get a mattress topper, as I said earlier, and do that because you really want to be comfortable. And there's something I want to show you, which a doctor who's a yoga teacher showed me. Um, we've done some work to open up the areas in the hips and the sacroiliac joints. And if we lie on our spine, what sometimes happens is we get a crimping in here, a bit of a scissoring action in, in the spine there. So, to have, and that happens when we let the feet roll out to the side, that cramps in the small of the back. So, using a couple of yoga blocks or some books or pillows, cushions, whatever, place them at the bottom of your mat or whatever it is that you're lying on at a gap like that whichever suits you. And then as you lie down, your feet will splay out to the side. And what you want is to have it exactly the gap that stops your feet splaying out too far and cramping the, the base of the spine. That's just about right for me. I think I've got that adjusted nicely. And then I haven't got any pain at all in my lower back. So if my feet splayed out, like so, then that forces the arching in there, the vertebrae are occluding, and we don't want that. So try this little trick, this tip. Have the block behind the head for support. Keep yourself nice and warm. 
and start your breathing. Turn the palms up and turn the thumbs over if you can, but into a relaxed position. Look down the body, Savasana. You can start with some deep breathing, breathing in from the belly and lifting it up into the chest. Hold it, then let it go. <sighs> Do that a few times. Then close your eyes and relax. Let the belly fall back to the spine, let the jaw open. Don't arch the back of the neck. If the back of the neck has arched, then stretch it out again. Adjust your blocks and your, your props so you get to a position where you're comfortable. You may by this time be lying on some soft articles like a, a duvet or a memory foam mattress topper. You can do this on your bed as well. And so you might like to move from wherever you've been doing your yoga to your bed or even the sofa if that's comfortable for you, if, if you can lie stretched out. You may also want to do this with your feet up like so, but it's also possible with the, the blocks there to be just as comfortable. So you might like to stay in this pose for some time, some minutes, breathing softly and gently, relaxing each part of the body in turn. Stretch and relax really is another of our mottos as well as stretch, not strain. Stretch and relax. When we relax, we extend more, we can twist more, elongate more, we can break up that inflammation which causes us pain. Eventually, come back Come back to the body, come back to your awareness of what's around you. Raise the feet up, place them on the ground there. Turn slowly to one side. Have a little relax. Then pushing yourself up. There we are. Thank you very much. I hope you enjoyed that and I hope that's been Good for you. Join our journey on yoga for AS. Hey everyone, thank you so much for watching. If this video added value to you, please like, comment, share, and importantly, subscribe to this channel for more tutorials to come. If you know someone that could also benefit from this tutorial, please do share it with them. You can reach out to Jeff via Instagram at jeff.lindsay or myself at Jamie Boda. Lastly, if you want to be part of a supportive community where you can learn more about Yoga for AS, join our Facebook group, Yoga for AS. You can see the link for all of these in the description below. Take care everyone and see you all soon.